Hello, everyone, again. Um, my name is Liam Howlett. I'm with Oracle. I'm going to go through some uh, maple tree proposed features uh, and then some other stuff. Um, hopefully, if we have time, we probably will. Uh, so uh, there's a few things that I've been working on or have in a backlog of uh, things I want to do <clears throat> coming up. Uh, there's some internal features that people probably don't really well, some people might care about uh, having a full flag count uh, for a node to say if there's any nulls or any, anywhere in the node you can put anything. Uh, it kind of coincides with dense nodes and removing of the big nodes. Uh, big node concept being something, again, internal to the tree uh, that should speed up writes. I, I've been working on trying to speed up writes because that's kind of the, the the biggest problem we face uh, with the tree right now. Um, these three features together will allow us to have uh, quicker uh, linear um, and single uh, single well, ranges of one, I guess you could say. So kind of like think PIDs, that sort of thing. Um, and then the other thing is, is the index compression. Uh, those, those things are kind of internal, so I don't know if uh, Maybe people want to dig into the tree. They can start looking at that sort of stuff. Uh, the external features are more what uh, people in this room probably want to talk about or are interested in seeing go in. That includes search marks, which also known as tags. Uh, so this is important because, um, well, basically, in our tree right now, we track gaps uh, and uh, ranges or just ranges. And this allows us to track ranges and put marks uh, in the tree so that we can search quickly for a particular mark and find them all. So we can do, uh, what do you call it? shadow shadow entry and, and no, pruning. This, 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 this is for uh, dirty bit. Oh, dirty bit, yeah. So dirty bit right back and all that fun stuff, right? Yeah. So, and then we also have pruning tree under memory pressure, which is the shadow cache, yeah. So we can flag things like that and we can find them quickly to, to reduce What's in the tree? You have a question? Yeah, this, this is just bringing Maple Tree up to parity with the X array, so supporting all the functionality that the X array implements, which speaks to the very last bullet on this slide. <laughs> yeah, right. So once we get there, we can basically make everyone who uses the X ray use the Maple Tree by force. Um, so you're welcome. Yeah. Um, Let's see what else. Oh, 64-bit uh, indices and 32-bit architectures uh, is to deal with file systems. File systems have been asking for this for a few years, and I haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, great, great if I had help, but I'm, I'm getting help, so that's good. Um, the continuous iterator. Um, some users want to iterate over a range, but only if there is no gaps and um, we could implement this as, as our own iterator, and that would hopefully clear up some of the stuff in like uh, MCL. MCL, yes, OK, yes, MCL. Uh, there's, there's a few function calls that use this. Uh, I was going to say MAVIZE, but I think MAVIZE just continues going. Um, and then there's the big dense nodes, and that's something to handle. It's basically, when, when we talk about dense nodes, basically what we're doing is we have uh, a node that uh, has all ranges of one. Uh, so it's just an array, so it becomes very quickly to look up. And big dense nodes would be 4K uh, array size. So you have this huge list of things. Uh, all, all of those are mostly to do with getting to parity with the X, X array interface. Uh, and when we get there um, with these features, we should have some performance wins. And that should kind of happen uh, without anyone really doing anything and then finding out, you know, there's some random crash and then emailing me. Um, probably Sysbot. Um, so yeah, so if there's anything that kind of sounds like it fits that what you're looking at doing and but maybe it doesn't quite fit, I'd, I'd like to hear about it and then maybe we can change what, uh, what we're doing to fit what you want or, or add it in. Uh, so the other thing I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of more users. I think we have eight or nine in the kernel now. 
of the maple tree. Um, and there's, there's, com there's common errors that people do, uh, probably because of my design decisions. My design decisions, back again, to try and meet parity with the X-ray. Uh, so one thing is the locking. There's, there's a way to use external locks, and Willie keeps telling me not to and telling people not to, but people do it. Uh, if you can get around setting an external lock and using your own lock, uh, it would be better because I think in the bigger plan, you want to get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I also wanted to put in a note that we still need a lock. This isn't a lockless data structure. It has it can RCU lock, read lock, but when you edit it, you still need to lock it. Uh, I, someone tried to use it without locks and it didn't go so well. Um, yeah, so I think that basically covers all the locking stuff. Um, yeah, oh, and when you RCU read lock and you find your data and then you release the RCU read lock, your data is not guaranteed to not go away. That's kind of your fault. Uh, I, I guarantee that we don't run off the end of the tree or no pointer exception during finding your data, but if, like, I'm not protecting your data especially after the RCU read unlock. Um, and then there's a generic store type. Um, when, when I initially wrote this, we wrote it for void pointers, so you could stuff whatever you wanted into the tree. And then someone, uh, Linus yelled at us saying that that was, that was wrong. Oh no, you need to, you know, if you do it, either you make it VMA pointers or you wrap it in, what do we call it, an API to, to, to make it safe so that you know you're getting the right type back and putting the right type in, uh, or you make it like a generic store interface uh, on uh, definition, right? And um, we, we went with making an interface, and uh, people are not making interfaces. So please make an interface and tell the generic storing Stuff is there, um, and and so uh, yeah, so you don't you know mess up. You, you get your compiler to catch your bugs, right? So that's always a good thing. Uh, the other thing is the uh, the X-ray conversions. When you convert an X-ray, um, I when I was coding this up, I realized that Maznex. When I when I go to to the next object. Um, it was exactly the same as find, in that if it was start, then we would go and get the first object that you wanted, and then continuously go to the next one. Uh, but mass find and mass next were identical, so it didn't, didn't really make sense to me to have two functions do the same thing. So I made mass next walk down and go to the next object. So if you want to start at zero and find all of them, use mass find. If you want to go to the next one, you ask for the next one, right? It's just kind of a, like a, just a little difference, keep you on your toes, you know? Um, we kind of hit this in one of the conversions. It was like, oh yeah, right, I, I did that. So I felt like, you know, telling people might be better. Um, so, so we're gonna add this type safety interface. Um, Eventually, so that basically, instead of having your maple tree stuff, you can have, you can declare it with, with the type, and then you don't have to worry about, well, you, you have to worry less about the interface. Um, again, like with the maz next or the, the finding and stuff, you might want to wrap that in your own interface, depending on what makes sense to you, right? And, and this is kind of what we're trying to do, is provide an API that anybody can implement a small amount of code to do what they want over their data as opposed to uh, writing a find function or, or whatever you had to do before with uh, the uh, RB tree or, or, or whatever, right? Like you just want to have a simple way of storing things and getting it back and ideally have it be performant. Do they have to be pointer-sized? Well, they have to be pointer-sized or smaller. <laughs> yeah, we deal with 64-bit pointers or uh, 32 on 32-bit architectures. That comes back to the first slide. I have to 
make it 64 for for 32 bit architectures well that, that's actually an interesting question right because for we, we want indices to be 64 bit but nobody's actually expressed an interest to us in having 64 bit data Uh, there was a lot of uh, talks today about uh, abstracting uh, the swap data structures, and we use the X-ray today, and if we could store more than eight bytes in the data, it m might be interesting. Just FYI. Yeah, so I mean, that, 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 that's a really interesting philosophical question, right? Do, do we want to, you know, we've got a, we've got a fixed size node, right? We've got 256 bytes. Do we want to spend the extra bytes? Do we, do we want to spend that on larger data and larger indices, or do we want to keep keep it at like a pointer and then, you know, slab allocate the thing that we're pointing to? And I, I can see it both ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on the size. Like, if you want to store 16 bytes instead of eight, it doesn't make sense to have a different allocation for it. Or maybe yeah. maybe we allow a certain maximum. Um, branching or minimum branching factor and we can work it out so that we always use the same size nodes and scale down the branching factor. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat and it's just a question of what, what makes sense and where to spend our time, yeah. David, you, you have something? So uh, I just raised like recently I was looking for a data structure that would represent a very sparse bitmap but with local non-sparsity. Um, and I think we have like the ID allocator that uses the Radix, Radix, so X array, not Radix tree. Ah, I'm too old, <laughs> X array. Uh, and I was wondering if, if we can do better and maybe not sure because there are of course the more bits in non-sparse regions that you can fit in, maybe the better. Right, yeah, so if you're looking for sparse, uh, we have we have the dense nodes, and basically what will happen, oh, go ahead. So you, 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 you're absolutely right. Um, so the maple tree is definitely better at random sparsity than, than, than is, so it, w it would be a really good thing for somebody to do, and it doesn't have to be you, it doesn't have to be Sid, it doesn't have to be me, uh, to convert the IDA to use the maple tree. Um, I think that would be a really good project. Like if somebody's got an intern that they want to, you know, give, give like a three-month project to, I think that would be a great project. Yeah. So right now I'm working on dense nodes, and the dense nodes and uh, and what do we call them range 64 nodes. It will switch between them. So you could have like when you're storing a whole bunch of just linear allocations of one, then you will have a dense node. And then once we get down to a certain amount of empty space, we'll switch over. And then it becomes, yeah, it's, it's really cool to watch grow um, and, and do that switch over and stuff. Uh, but it's, it's not quite ready yet. I'm still working on CERN's problems, so, <laughs> so hopefully soon. Um, yeah, so uh, it's, yeah. So we'll get there soon. But I mean, I think Chuck, it's not in this room. Um, Chuck switched over from the X-ray to the maple tree, and he saw a performance increase going even with the, uh, without the dense nodes. Uh, he's still waiting on the dense nodes, because that will just boost his performance without him even needing to do anything. So that'll be, that'll be a pretty neat email to get. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're going with the maple tree. Um, if there's any other questions in the maple tree, otherwise I can go on to this VMA tracking stuff. All right, so this is uh, this was added for Vlasimil. Vlasimil asked me to go over what we were thinking about doing in the VMA space because I don't know he he, he likes it or something. I don't know. Um, so. Uh, we're trying to remove some, some more of what happens behind the scenes in the VMA. Uh, right now, uh, I think Android uses guard VMAs a fair bit. Um, I know other people do. And basically, when you use guard VMAs, you essentially double the number of VMAs you're going to have in your system, almost. Well, maybe not quite, but pretty much. Um, and then we allocate a VMA, and then we only ever use the start and the end, which is actually already stored in the maple tree. So you're storing something, you're allocating and storing something that is literally never used 
for no benefit. So if we could just mark these as special guard VMAs, and this comes back again to the iterator stuff, right? We have a VMA iterator. When you iterate over VMAs, maybe you want to skip the guard VMA. Maybe you can just return, hey, this is a guard VMA in this range, right? And maybe you have two sections because you want to find the guard VMAs or, or whatever. We can hide all this, and we can stop the allocations, which seems like a pretty decent idea. I don't know if we want to count them against our map count, not the page map count, the other map count, the mm struct map count, because you know, map count, right? Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of something we were thinking about. Um, the, other, the other thing that kind of comes to mind with this is uh, we have restrictions on what we want, where we want VMAs to sit in the space. Uh, usually at the higher end, we don't, like there's a, there's a max high, and sometimes a max low. I'm not sure if that's all platforms or what. It's basic, basically nobody wants you to map the zero page. There is a special personality flag you can set which will allow you, which will allow M maps to actually sit at address zero, and that's because some dusty old Unix in the 1980s allowed you to, and somebody wrote some code that depended on it, and we just don't care. So. Yeah, like there, there's, there's, there's going to be something you'll need to do to delete that uh, guard VMA from address zero, but otherwise, yeah, put a guard VMA at address zero. Right, so I think uh, the reason I'm like not really sure what's going on there is I didn't think we could have mapped to zero, and then someone told me I broke their stuff because they could no longer map to zero. And then they sent me like a program that used to work and it didn't work anymore, and I had to like make it, that work again. So I, I don't know why, <laughs> if we're not allowed to do it, that you still can. I guess it's map fixed, you can do whatever you want. Or? Well, well, well like, like I said, there's a personality flag that allows you to. So his, his they, they must have said that. that okay, I'll, I'll have the, I mean, whatever it is, we can restrict this. And this is important. And it's important because when you're searching for gaps, if you think about tracking the gaps up the tree, we have a really big gap at the start and the end that actually aren't gaps. Right? And then we go down and we say, we can put a VMA in this node. And you're like, no, no, we can't because it's too high or it's too low. And then you have to say, walk back up or return. You know, it's, there's no room. So it's kind of like, it's not representing the areas as they actually exist. And then there's the VDSO. The VDSO, I think, is almost always handled in the arch underscore map, on uh, map, whatever. Um, and I think it was only ever handled there because the RB tree limitation of only having be able to be in one tree. But we don't have that anymore. So we can actually just put the VDSO in where it's supposed to be. And then we can take all the special cases out and probably add special cases in where you, know, you can't do special things to the VDSO that you know, split the VDSO or whatever. But Maybe you can MCL them, who knows? Um, yeah, so that, then there's the stack guard. If, if, if we can represent that also in the tree, then we maybe have to change the page fault handling because we'll actually land in a VMA. Or maybe we put the stack guard in as another special case, like a, we could put it in as a guard VMA. Uh, and then when you hit, this in the page fault handler. You say, oh, this is a guard VMA. Let's make sure that it's not an expansion of a stack and then treat it special that way. So my thought on the, on the stack VMA is that what we could do is make start and end different for the stack between what the VMA thinks it is and what the maple tree thinks it is. And so when, when we land in the bit of the stack that hasn't been allocated yet, we will find the correct VMA because the maple tree is, is going to have the VMA stored over a larger range. But we will see that we're actually off the, either the start or the end, depending on which way your stack's growing. We'll see that we're off the start or the end of the stack and we'll grow the stack. And as part of that, we can choose to also grow the chunk of the maple tree, which is uh, allocated to the stack. Right. So the only thing I'm worried about there is that uh, because we're going to be finding the VMA the same way that we find all the other VMAs is now we've added a special case to the regular path through the page fault handler. 
but the stack is already handled specially. Yes, but we find the VMA and then yeah. we do things. Yeah. And if we don't find the VMA, then we fall back to, is this a stack expansion, right? right? Whereas in your case, we'll now find the VMA and we'll say, is this a stack expansion? So we're going to branch in the regular case before, you see what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. I don't think it's going to be a huge difference, but I mean, we, sh we should ask Seren to measure it for us. Yeah, yeah. Seren <laughs> does this all the time, right? He's not paying attention, so it's good. <laughs> Silence gives assent. I think Seren measures if it will be a regression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Seren always finds the regression, yes. Yeah, so, so this is kind of where... It's yeah, <laughs> it's the price for the, for the benchmark. So th this is the, the removing the complexity. So, so Vlastamil, you wanted me to put this in. Do you have anything to add? No, you have nothing to add. You, you asked me to put in a slide, and you're not even going to talk about it. This is good. This is like I'm, I'm warming the crowd up for him. How much time do you have? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I don't even know if I have another slide. There you go. There you go. This is. Uh, I'd have one for the previous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is, is, I, I think this goes into the direction of the VDSO. Whenever, whenever I read GUP code, there is something weird where we try to look up a VMA, and if we don't find a VMA, we look for a gate VMA. Yeah. And, and the gate VMA is something that is from the VSYS call. I, I don't know why it exists, why it is there, but if we could just get rid of that and just represent that in a tree and find it and remove that. That would make me very happy. Oh, yeah, I, I, think, see, I see nodding heads. I think Surin, <laughs> I think Surin also hits this in the uh, proc PIDs maps. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There, and then especially in the proc PID maps, you like park the where you are and stuff. And so every time you come back, you're like, oh, no, wait. What about this one? You know, it's just, it's ugly. So we can maybe, we can maybe get rid of that for us. And, and also, if we can get rid of the arch underscore stuff, then all of a sudden things start collapsing down in the mm, like mmap.c file. And so it'll be really, I'm pretty pumped about getting rid of that. Yeah, we could have like a one way of representing those special VMAs would be really great. And uh, guard VMAs are quite a big problem for Android because it's one of the biggest like slap uh, caches right now in the whole system. Because of their sheer number. Because you have 3,000 VMAs and, and 15. And each one, yeah, yeah, each one gets came, a guard. Guard one, which we, the only reason we have them is that if you hit it, we, <laughs> basically we need to seek fault. And yeah. do you put uh, user fault FDs on those? or? No, I think it's. So. It's sorry? It's pro pro yeah, yeah, that's right. It's proc uh, none, okay. Yeah, the only reason in Android they were doing it, well, the reason that I know of, because it was strange to me why you, you would do that, is that they don't want to like sprinkle the user space code with if if I'm in this area. So you just catch this and... So if, if we're going to do this, do we count these against the map count? Like, are, th are these yes? Is it, we have so, no yeah. and we have a yes. <laughs> I think it should be because it is counted right now. It is counted right now, sure. Uh, no, the reason is you don't want to allow an infinite amount. I mean, you need some way to cap them. And if it's double the number of your current VMAs, that's fine, but you shouldn't allow one million. In a maple tree? Well, uh, so 16 bytes? 16 bytes, yeah. And I mean, people shouldn't be using that many, so. <laughs> Well, also we could we could also do something really clever, like we could allow uh, Vlasimil to add them to VMA merge. Yeah. So, uh, so my idea for uh, for how we could handle these guard VMAs, which are basically prot known, right? So is uh, that what we could do is to have the original VMA extend to the to the pages that. The, or areas that are the guards, but uh, use some maybe a special new M advice call that would just set the page tables in a special way, but without splitting the VMA. Because today, if you do a M product, it splits a VMA and it has to match the, uh, the the permissions with the page tables. But 
if we, for example, created a new special swap type that would say uh. this this thing is this uh, poison or guard, but then we wouldn't have to adjust the VMA. But then, but then, like when you're merging VMAs, you're like in a in, in, in a big, bigger nightmare, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The user space that's using it would have to track where it put these, but it has to do that even today. Yeah, the VMA. No, the well, VMA merge. Are you just mark these VMAs as non-mergeable? Because they're not mergeable today. Why would we want them mergeable? Yeah, I think we, we track them just in the tree would be easier. But but if if they merged, what would be the bad thing that would happen? You lose your guard VMA and your... No, the, the page table would still contain the poison entry. But but then we've complicated all the page table walkers because now they have to know about this extra special. They already have to handle the special well, swap types. What it's called? There's migration entries that are using the same thing. And so when uh, Jan Horn at one point asked for the same thing, did you simply have like an Emmelweiss call that enters a new PTE marker? And whenever you stumble over that, you say, yeah, well, I'm not supposed to do anything with that here. Uh, I think it requires some thought, but it reduces the VMA completely. I mean, you cannot add arbitrary VMAs. You have to place it into an existing VMA. Yeah, it would have to be. Like an end of the stack would be you have like that fixed one and no other VMA. But I mean, that the other approach is quite nice because it, it like you need don't need any changes to your uh, your user space right yeah yeah and and we basically just lop off all the 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 memory we've allocated for these structs that never get used and the walking and the and the fault handling is identical we handle the same way it, it just shortcuts things but but the count Increasing the count, there's, it's, it's a good point that if we don't count them, then people can put a lot in. But we're running into people running out of count. And if they're all using guard VMAs, they're doubling their count. I mean, they can increase it, but. But I mean, they would have the same issue as of today, right? Well, but it would be half as bad. Right, like but the, are these? Are, are you talking about these video games? Oh uh, no, not uh, just the video games. I, yeah, yes, yeah. And, but I, I don't think guard pages are the problem. No, no. <laughs> but but there's other users apparently. So I think we should certainly count them. How we count them? If it's just like we allow the same number of VMAs, like double it or something like that. To, yeah. To okay. TBD. Sure. And do, do you have any idea how much code would have to change to like deal with the thing that suddenly you find something that's a VMA but there's no VM struct for it? No. <laughs> or maybe <Non> if we, <laughs> or maybe if we convert everything to the right iterators, it would be the solution. Yeah, so we have the iterator already, right? We have the VMA iterator. We can handle them in there. Um, I don't really know where we handle all of all of the special cases right now. I'd have to look uh, more in depth at it, but I don't think it's going to be a lot. I mean, you're not going to. You, you need the start, like I said, the start and the end, and there was perhaps one other thing. But that, yeah. but what would be the point where you know and decide that this is the case, you should handle it like this and not just there was some real VMA and then somebody made it brought known, so you throw it away at that point and really leave it only as the maple right, so tree special entry or... Right, so we have special entries for the tree now. We have a zero entry, we could use that. We could add another entry, special entry, but I don't. I think we've got like two already, and we. But my point is, you have to recognize when is the time to use this special entry because it looks from the API point of view like just another protonone VMA 
you don't know if it, that it's it that this is a guard VMI, right? I, I mean, I don't, I don't think it would be that hard to d identify. Do you know where it happens when, they, when we identify it? Is it just like an MAP of map private, map anon with prod non, or what is it? Like a single page? Or, or do they use mprotect? Or, or do they uh, map the whole thing and then call mprotect? I, I don't. I don't. Okay, so it's Ren is saying that, that they map a large thing and then put individual mprotects in the middle of it, thus splitting it into lots of smaller VMAs. So we're not even concerned about VMA merging. We just want to present, present, prevent VMA splitting. That puts a bit of a different characteristic on this. Yeah. Or when we can not have a VMA at all and put in our special entry, right? Yeah, but th th this, this is making me th like Vlastimil's proposal of the special uh, entry <laughs> a lot, uh, page table entry a lot more. Yeah, I see why he put this slide into my slide deck. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's so tricksy. <laughs> yeah. See. So, um, so uh, David, you said there was this proposal by Jan Hor already. So, do you know there was any conclusion or no, it just it died out and I can find a thread somewhere? I think it ended up being a private discussion between me and him because I was working on like explicitly sparse memory areas where you essentially you would you would go ahead with that approach and you would have some policies like self-moving guard pages, like to have a stack autocross, but only if you stumble over it. You, it well, okay, you I'm not proposing some mag magic some with that. And I, I think I just told him that I'm working on that. And he had a prototype and uh, there was no conclusion. But you could reach out to him and ask if they're using that somewhere else. So I'm ne not even proposing such auto-magical things. He, he only proposed it to me and raised it in an upstream discussion, yeah. We're going to add an MFIs. Oh, yeah. All right. MFIs flag. All right. Well, time's up. Thanks, everyone, for your time. <laughs>